Two words. Guns. In Borderlands 3, your guns are your most prized possession. They separate you from the normies and the Sylvester Stallones of gaming. They separate you from the... the they separate you from, from your friendships because they have better RNG than you and you feel separated. Borderlands has a gun of almost every flavor. We got guns that shoot hamburgers, guns that explode when you reload them, guns with legs, and a personal favorite of mine, Poo Poo Diaringus guns. But as always, what if all these endless flavor blasted options were stripped right from our inventories? What if I decided to show you what a hurricane of testosterone and the ancient Mandarin art of fisting looked like? What if you lived vicariously through me and realized that guns <laughs> These bad boys aren't that important as you thought they were. Today, we will answer a question no sane person has ever asked. Can you beat Borderlands 3 without guns? Nobody has clearly ever asked this question before because only a man as troubled as I am, after seeing that absurdly hideous George Lopez Gundam from Sharkboy and Lava Girl, could ask something like this. In order to make this run even possible, a few rules need to be set in stone. Rule 1. When I say no guns, you could bet your sweet little cupcaked ass cheeks I mean it. Not even guns with melee attachments. Rule 2. No OP grenade cheese and no legendary gear. I can use grenades, artifacts, and shields, but as an added bonus, my shield can never pass the green rarity. Rule 3. Every and anything can be used to terminate my enemies, of course, without shooting them. And lastly, Rule 4. Put up your shutters because this hurricane full of cosmic brownie testosterone is about to hit category 5. Grab your Scooby-Doo fruit snacks and Trix yogurts because your gamer girl Sandra is gonna show you how it's done. Before we start this wacky and tacky adventure, I just want to clarify something. The backlash in my last video from Mario was absolutely immense, so I decided to take his advice and bind melee to right mouse click. I did it, dude. God damn. Look, right mouse bind. I did it, dude. I did it. Okay? Alright? Okay. Now, it will be no surprise to people that this run, I'll be choosing that little beefcake Amara. Her fisting abilities are that of a Shaolin monk and dragon dildo crossover. She is basically one punch man, but instead of going bald from all the training she had, she turned into Machamp from Pokemon. Literally. After picking Amara, I was greeted with my favorite gamer girl in all of gaming, Claptrap. He gave me an Echo device. I changed my name to that of a YouTube user that parted my wiggle bags like the 1964 New York Times vs. Sullivan case. And and then set off on my way. My guardian ranks are still at zero by the way, and that won't be changing. Long story short, I watched Claptrap get outplayed and flashed on by the insane clown posse and their magnet, and this was when I was graced with the euphoria of fisting. Having my melee bound to my mouse was a godsend. It wasn't too bad so far, and I enjoyed playing testosterone fueled patty cake with these bandits. Shiv, on the other hand, kind of gave me what I thought he would. With the force of 1,000 Chernobyl nuclear reactors, Shiv was dead, Lilith came to thank me for destroying the enemy nexus and then I was off to Crimson Flaccid Meat HQ. I was told to go find the Sun Smasher Chief and that is exactly what your boy did. With my action skill now obtained, these foes met no match for me and my hot dog water fueled anger. Like some sort of rated X version of Karate Kid, I karate dicked all of the bandits on my way to Vaughn, saved his Captain Underpants looking headass, and returned to Lilith. No gun so far was faring quite easy, but this was honestly expected for the beginning of this run. Next it was time to meet up with Ellie, which was the biggest disappointment of this game. Even though she is still my prom queen, what's up with her dropping some weight, man? I mean, yeah, the jiggle physics are... I mean, God bless Gearbox for this, but now I'm going to need to update my Ellie hentai body pillow, dude. Come on, that's some fucking bullshit. After helping my diaper booty queen, I now had access to vehicles and that meant that your boy couldn't shoot in them. I quickly made sure to do the most important main quest in the game, getting Claptrap his teat suckled hat, and after a few of my favorite things ever to gain some levels, your girl and his fists were ready to hit up mouthpiece. Before we push any further gentle boys and girls, let's discuss the plan. Operation taking out the trash at night was now in full effect. This operation should be quite simple, you little Nintendo 64 controllers. This run, we will go a couple points into Amara's red tree and then absolutely do a kissing prank gone wrong on her green tree, which focuses on amplifying my fisting technique. After, we will make our merry way obeying the speed limit and embrace full level Saitama by the end of the game, making this whole run all the way easier. Amara's elemental and ranged attacks will make for taking out mobs easier than taking out the skeletons in my closet, because 
I said I'm sorry mama, but your boy's staying up late tonight to prove to some people on the internet something that they probably don't care about, and they're only subscribed for my profile picture because my contents... <laughs> Why do I always do this? <laughs> Man. Listening to God Cringe Tyreen was torturous, and you know what was worse? The fact that they renamed midgets to tanks. Are you fucking kidding me, Gearbox? Get a fucking grip, you SJ. <laughs> My fist honestly stood no match for the enemies here, but with a bit of perseverance, I was able to make my way through. Mouthpiece was my first major boss fight, and this was going to be a piece of cake. After a bit of fisting and spamming my action skills, I got his health to the length of a smurf's dick and did what any reasonable, educated, cultured person would do. I killed him with a slide kick. This achievement meant a great deal to me, and with the vault map now in hand, I returned to Lilith and then found out she was useless, so it was time to find Tannis. My tiny meat crusade continued, and I saved Tannis from a bunch of bandits as she deciphered the map. So far, the run was faring quite easy. With the map now deciphered, it was time to assemble a ship and head to space. I roadkilled a couple of ads for the sake of Elon Musk and stole an av chip, destroying those poor little bandit insert euphemism for butt cheeks here. Haha. -ha. Guys, I'm gonna pause the video for you now to give you some time to laugh because I know that was really goddamn funny and you're gonna need to laugh after that one. So tell me when you guys are done laughing and then watch Lilith get her power super sucked. A marriage of fists and brown starfishes occurred on this day, and Lilith was now saved. We made our way to the stars, and it was time to continue our fisting conquest on the other side of the galaxy. Promethea was the destination of the next vault, and your favorite gamer girl was ready to take this bad boy down. Unfortunately, the children of Cringe and their queen was on Promethea, but still, the challenge was not present. And finally, I met with Lorelei. Being forced to destroy a vehicle without guns really wasn't enjoyable, but I did my master's bidding, and then we got close to Atlas HQ. I enjoyed getting Eiffel Towered by everyone and their grandmas during this part, and you know, I didn't really ask Lorelai, but I'm sure she enjoyed it too. It was time to now meet with Reese, and holy hell, my 23-year-old brain couldn't even recognize the gloriousness that rested on his face. That shit was absolutely divine. After chatting and finding out where the first vault key piece was, I checked my PDA and oh, wow, won't you look at that? One o'clock appointment with Mr. Sidequest, okay. After getting Lorelai some coffee and burgers and actually hating my life for doing this with no guns, I was done with the Sidequest rampage, and it was time to get back to work. The hyperbolic chamber seemed to deem me well, and I was absolutely dominating these naughty enemies. I made my way to zero, and that boy was looking undergeared as fuck. So we got him a legendary sword upgrade, and oh, won't you look at that! My PDA says we have a Giga Chat appointment at 4 p.m. Right after I was done playing the pre sequel and making another shitty joke about it because I'm not funny at all. Giga Chad stood no match for my Machamp's strength HM because you know I EV trained her into the green skill tree, and this was where I hit my first problem. The problem wasn't clapping Giga Chad's ass. Chicks. The problem was the fact that when I got downed, Zero wasn't the homie I thought he was. I spent my time getting Gigamind low to finish him off with a slide kick, not even worrying about being downed because I knew Zero had my back and this... This... I can't believe him. So I tried again, and 15 minutes later, I kicked his smelly nog shins in and called it a day. I put Giga Chad's fermented egg brain into Reese's computer, and it was time to find the location of the next vault key piece. Athena was the next planet in line to face the wrath of my testosterone hurricane. The difficulty was starting to scale, but boy oh boy, was I showing them who the real daddy in town was. And as Psalm 31.4 says, Maya, I would do anything to let you phase lock even my toenails for just a mere second. After pushing forward with Maya, there isn't much to say here. We made another hit, and I'll tell you now, we did it with ease. And then it was time to fight Captain Taint. As my first challenge, this was when the game's difficulty scaled up quite a bit, and killing him wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Even switching up elements to fist him to his weaknesses didn't help. The Shinobi Alliance headband wasn't going to do me this run. I needed something of more potency. So after boiling some hot dog water and downing a few shots, it was time. With my giant brain and really small wiener, I was 
was able to finish him off and as always, I'll put the boss fight in the description. That link will also have every major boss fight that I do this run. Either way, I had the first Volkey piece, I was now half chubbed and as my favorite artist Bill B. Eyelash once said, it was time to play the pre-sequel. My gear wasn't anything special as of far and with Reese cashing in his allies card, it was time to skedaddle and take out his vermin problem. Being in the pre-sequel was easier than I thought it would be. Amara's fists gave everyone's asshole a diameter to that of a three-story townhome and I spent most of my time in the sky while changing my elemental type and getting absolutely destroyed every four seconds. I eventually made it to Katagawa Ball and this was when I realized the hitbox for melee attacks in this game were dog feces. But after a little moral support from my good pal Kevin, hey Kevin listen man I need a little ego boost. Tell me I got like nice shoes or or some nice nipples or something. I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, you got this, man. I believe in you. You're doing great, kid. I turned Katagawa Ball into my own personal anal bead, and I had the second vault key piece now in my hands. The final piece rested in the hands of Katagawa. At Atlas HQ, I pushed forward on my way to deal with taking out the trash, but I got my ass absolutely handed to me. Eventually though, I made it to Reese's Bioshock roleplay fantasy room, and Katagawa was next on the list. This fight was surprisingly incredibly easy, but in no time I was able to make a spit roast of his health bar. The final piece of Exodia was now mine, and the vault key was assembled, and I now had the skill that allowed me to embrace my inner Machamp and fist with the power of a desperate housewife's rage. This was going to make things 100 times easier. Fancy meeting you here, you little bit. Alright, okay. I was just warming up. Alright, I wasn't playing last game. That was my mom, and now I'm... I'll admit, I went into this fight a little cocky, and I will also admit that Maya couldn't be any more f***ing useless by not reviving me. After many tries and just being a little bitch jumping around and hitting him with my ranged attacks, the rampager was now dead, and I finally knew the disappointment my parents felt when they had me. I forgot to kill the rampager with the slide attack. I expect every single one of you guys to dislike this video now. I'm... I'm, guys, I'm so sorry. Quickly then after, Maya turned into a class mod and Ava being the loot goblin she is, instantly picked it up. It was time for Eden 6 and to save my boy, Mr. Hammylock. I had my boy Marcus from Halo 3 by my side and we decided to beat some booties in unison. With my perk tree ever growing, it was becoming a bit easier, but death still ensued. Tiny Tina gave us the firepower we needed and Mordecai did basically nothing as he watched, just as any actual Mordecai player. Fortunately, killing the warden wasn't very much of a nightmare this time around, and it was as easy as catching hell rats in Evil Dave's basement in RuneScape. With my boy Sir Hammerlock free, it was time to get intel on the next vault piece. This was where things started to become a little pain in my dingleberry sandwich. I mean sure, when I got to Wainwright's estate, I do have to admit that he was a badass, but that didn't beat the fact that getting butt fucked by Thanos' purple schlong was not fun. This part damn near broke me. In due time, he was dead, and I found the Jacobs Family mixtape. We listened to that shit and I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty fire, as the young boys say nowadays. But the family jewel was next on the list and my fists were craving more flesh. I arrived at the Jacobs family ship crash site, found Ice-T after freeing him from a dinosaur, and went through the downed Jacobs family ship to find Genevieve. Making it through the ship, I went through pounding everything I possibly could in sight. At this point, I had a 75 kill streak, and my KDA was looking quite admirable. It rivaled even the upper echelon of the FaZe Clan KD God. But with Balex now the proud owner of his very own Gundam, we united our diaper booty forces and brought Genevieve to her demise. For this fight, the main goal was to make sure that my elements matched her weaknesses, and not even 10 minutes later she was dead and the vault key piece was now in my possession. Next, it was time to use Clay's special vision to get through and meet up with his homies. Thanks to the comments in my last video, I was able to pass this part without firing the weapon once, but I did use it to find out where the weak spots were. After rounding up the homies, it was time for my next Thanos. I got pretty much demolished during this fight until I found out that phase locking him in place and using him like a sock puppet was quite effective. With the last vault key piece now in my possession, you knew what that meant boys. Making my way to the vault, Aurelia got in the way of me and the riches that awaited, which I mean I, I wouldn't be able to use them anyway so I 
dude, I'm just playing the game, all right, man? Aurelia got a taste of my justice, and I had the intention of finishing her off with a slide kick, but I didn't know the ice pillar she stood upon was physically a part of her. Not only am I expecting a few dislikes this video, but I want to see those unsubs too, because this is... This is f***ing ridiculous. Can't like stupid idiot. I'm an idiot. After breaking a few statues, it was time for Grave Ward. Honestly, I take back what I said just a second ago. If you haven't subbed yet or used the strength HM on that like button, please do so just for this fight. This boss was uh yeah. Hey guys, Moxie's right tit 33 here coming at you with the new Grave Ward farming method. The conference call that OP grenade. This shit is guaranteed kill after 50 minutes. Most efficient way, baby. Hell. After 40 goddamn minutes of praying to the Lord and Savior Randy Pitchford that I didn't die. Hell yeah, look at this, boys. Look at this goddamn deeps. Damn, bro, this is faster than the other method. Oh my. No! Alright, that's. I'm fucking. Holy shit, no. Right. I finally did it, and it was all in the name of testosterone and microwaved breakfast burritos. The feat was done, but now the show must go on. The cringe twins stole Tannis, but good thing is, I knew exactly where she was. I gave my offering to enter the festival, and like a monsoon, fisting, testosterone, and pain sweeped my enemies by surprise. Although the enemies were getting a bit harder, I was very grateful that side quests basically were non-existent for me at this point. I tried stopping Carnivora with actions skills, but it just didn't seem possible, so I resorted to using the barrel flinging attachment on my AK-47 to try and take her down. Now it was time for the Agonizer 9000. Dealing damage to him was difficult because my melee attacks barely reached him, and my Dragon Ball Z Kai Blast literally tickled his ball sack with the Falcon's Feather. After spending a while quickscoping him with phase blasts and nading him whenever possible, I got to his Iridium Core stage, and this was where things got even more tedious. I am now probably the only person that took 17 godforsaken minutes to kill him during the easiest phase. We found out Tannis was Ailita from Code Lyoko, and now it was time to go retrieve her Iridium nuclear reactor, or whatever the hell that thing is. And after getting the reactor back to safety, it was now time to deal with one of the cringe twins. At this point, I had now ascended into full Saitama, and turned the bandits into a bunch of used condoms. I finished off Troy's White Knights with a little blend of my action skill and right mouse button, and in no time, I finally got to Troy. You know, it's kind Kinda hard fighting Troy when he literally looks like Channing Tatum's asshole after the gym. But the fight honestly wasn't too bad. With my element tuned to fire, he was susceptible and vulnerable to a flurry of bad fisting jokes and the occasional action skill. With Troy dead, that just meant two more boss fights and this run was over. With haste, I stormed to Necro to fucking I still don't know how to say that word, and probably never will. And from there I met Typhon, the very first Vault Hunter. He told me to take General Taint out on a date, and wow, I really enjoyed my time with him, but just like that, I punched the final fart right out of his chocolate tunnel and was off to retrieve the final vault key. Every other boss was finally dead and only one remained to play Chad Patty Cake with. My gear, phenomenal. My ego, higher than it's ever possibly been because I recently got a text message from my crush. My looks, still a mixture between 90s Justin Timberlake and Vin Diesel. I was now ready to end this fucking run. The final fight took me 50 minutes, but I won't lie, I was able to do it in one fight. Patience was the key to success during this fight. The plan was to stay on the outer rings of God Cringe Tyrene's arena as I blasted her with a little bit of that Kai Blast and the occasional grenade. Me getting up close and personal was basically a death sentence. Fortunately, ads in her arena weren't two aids and during DPS critical phases, I was able to dish out a decent bit of damage. Tyrene was finally dead, and although it came at the cost of my spacebar and sanity, the run was finally over. This was the final chapter in my galactic dragon dildo fisting adventure. You can beat Borderlands 3 without guns. I answered this stupid question and documented it all so you sweet poops didn't have to, and I hope you enjoyed yet another zany adventure. If you like what you saw here, go ahead and throw one of those Scooby-Doo fruit snacks at that like button. If you want to see more of the Lord's work, be sure to hit that sub button for weekly updates on my mental health. When this video is released, a Q&A also will be starting up for my bathtub Q&A special, so be sure to head to my community tab and ask me anything and everything. Thank you guys so damn much for your support to the Diaper Booty Gang. Follow my socials if you haven't already, and be sure to stay tuned for next week's video. Can you stop a fat guy from rolling down a hill to crush you with syrup.